Yo neighbors, Bobby Locks reviews G.I. Joe Classified Series number 104. Agent Helix, one of the more unique characters in the G.I. Joe universe. Relatively new, 2009 versus 1982, but definitely an interesting character from her debut to the fact that she is on the spectrum, a very unique hero with ASD, which is pretty cool. Coming up. G.I. Joe Classified Series number 104, Agent Helix. Like I said, one of the more unique G.I. Joe characters. Let's dive right into it. We'll start right off with the box here. Um, I actually think that maybe the marketing or promotional team made a mistake with this digital render. And what I mean by that is she's in the same wave as Shockwave. And I'll put Shockwave's cover art up here. But basically, he is a Detroit... SWAT team member, one of the youngest to make it through the program. Agent Helix is an off-the-grid covert ops, basically assassin for G.I. Joe. Why is he on a beach with a speeding train behind him, kind of off the grid? And Agent Helix here is shown in front of a suburban house with a SWAT team behind her. Now, there's probably a couple of Easter eggs that I missed. I'm usually pretty good at them. But I actually think that this is possibly a mistake. Anyway, right here we got the digital render for Agent Helix. We got her weapons loadout. More artwork from Oliver. Again, a QR code that does nothing. I think I solved this one for you, Hasbro. Gonna do a video on it. I procrastinate. Video is coming. But I think I solved this for everybody. On the back, again, we got the digital render of Agent Helix. Her weapons load out. Some reuse there. This is a telemetry device that helps control one of her more unique abilities. And then this is a Band-Aid. The Band-Aid is a cool little Easter egg. It goes back to her debut. Which brings us right to... Who is she? Agent Helix debuted in 2009 in a cross-promotional video game and comic book series. The video game was produced by Double Helix, which is where we get Agent Helix from. The cross-promotion was very reminiscent of Shadows of the Empire. Star Wars did that back in 1996, where they tied everything together. Book, video game, Dark Horse comic book series. Hasbro tried to do the same thing here with when they launched G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. So Agent Helix was a playable character. There was like this horrible CGI shorts called Operation Hiss. It was, I guess it was kind of like a prequel to the movie itself. And then the game was like a sequel to the movie. Both of those multimedia things were horrible. Just wasn't good. The comic book was very good. And that's where her popularity comes from. And why we get to see her in classified form now. Now to add to the uniqueness of being one of the first G.I. Joes to appear in a video game. Followed by a comic book appearance. Agent Helix also had her first action figure debut on a line without actually being in the movie. Now, that wasn't a huge deal. There were some other characters that were in the line that weren't in the movie, but it was definitely unique to get a character that nobody knew about. So on top of her debut, who is she? So over the years, they really fleshed the character out. During a flashback series, she was rescued by Snake Eyes. She was a prisoner of a human trafficking ring. They had her locked up because of her unique abilities. Then she became an asset or a special project of General Hawk. Probably the darkest thing that he's ever done. He saw her potential to become a weapon and took it upon himself to have her placed with a family of special operatives that were in witness protection and he had her trained as an assassin over the years. She was completely off the books. It's in that backstory where we learn that Agent Helix as ASD. It's heavily implied that she's on the spectrum, and it's kind of a unique sci-fi twist to autism where she's a savant. She's very much like Dustin Hoffman's character in Rain Man, where she's able to very quickly see things that other people don't see. But in her case, it's not used to see mathematical probabilities. It's used to see outcomes in a fight in kind of a data mindset. Now, it's not quite like Neo in The Matrix, which is what I envision. 
but they describe it in one of the issues where she kind of pauses and assesses everything very quickly and she can calculate how many opponents there are, what they may do next, what's the best weapon, what's the angle to attack from, what's the probability that bad guy number two is going to come in front of bad guy number six. Hawk kind of dubs this as total organic battlefield awareness. It, it's not a real thing. But it's almost like they're taking her mind of a savant and amplifying it. So it kind of reminds me of the movie Wanted, where they took panic attacks and anxiety, the normal panic attacks and anxieties that millions of people deal with every day. In the comic book run and in the movie Wanted, they took that and they made it that it was actually a superhero trait, which was a really inventive and creative twist. They're trying to do the same thing here, where they're taking her different view of the world, but using it in more of a sci-fi, almost superhero way. She's also kind of like Ben Affleck's character in The Accountant, Christian Wolf. He's also on the spectrum. He's a mathematics savant by day, CIA trained assassin by night. Maybe not CIA. Anyway, she kind of reminds me of Ben Affleck's character. And another part of her skill set is, again, kind of like Neo in The Matrix, or like Marvel's Taskmaster where she can very quickly see, observe, and I'm talking quickly, like in seconds, absorb martial arts, any form of fighting, and quickly adapt to it and emulate it. It's kind of cool. Impossible, but kind of cool. Either way, let's get her open. So I like the yellow. It's like a canary yellow, but... You can see right off the bat, they're not using the paper anymore. I'm not sure what wave that really stopped with, but look, she's a tiny character. How tight do you need to have the plastic? Her legs are all warped. Doesn't look like there's anything wrong, I think. If you check out a toy kind of mood, Travis's was popped out. But really, how, how tight do you need that thing to be in there? That's what she said! <laughs> Anyway, I can tell you this right off the bat. This is a really good head sculpt. Like, it's too tight to even pull the plastic up. I don't like to take my figures out like this. What if I scratch it? All right, there we go. So, again, we get that artwork. Man, that is really nice. I really like that. I hope that we don't lose that in the return to plastic packaging. So, look at these legs. Thankfully, they're not popped out or anything, but I don't think you need to be in that tight. Let's move them around real quick. Doesn't seem like anything wrong, so I can tell you the same thing that everybody noticed as soon as this kind of debuted, that these are reuse of Scarlet's legs. But yeah, I'm a little bit annoyed. Look at that. Now, this should be an easy fix, and I will go fix it real quick, but this is where you're going to have QC issues, so that's a little bit annoying. Hot water should fix this. Let me pause the video, and I'll be right back. All right, so that should be relatively a, an easy fix. Um, let's see if it worked. Basically, I did the boil and pop method. I just put her under really hot water, then ran her under cold. And there you go. It appears to fix the bow-leggedness or whatever you would want to call that. It's not something that you should need to do. Um, unfortunately, it is a reality in today's action figures. Um, it's just the plastic that they're made with. It is an easy fix. Uh, I get the frustration of a lot of people. This is very similar to the weapons. And this happens across the board. I've seen it with Masters of the Universe. Definitely with Valiverse. Extremely likely with McFarlane. NEC has had issues. G.I. Joe has had issues. It's just today's plastic. That's just all there is to it. So it's kind of one of those things where if you're going to collect, you kind of got to accept that it happens. Should it happen? No. Easy fix? Yes. But now that we have normal looking legs, um, let's go into taking a look at Helix. So again, Helix is using Scarlet's legs. This is Scarlet from version one. She was in the first wave released. So unfortunately, we get the pins here. It blends in nice. The coloring is good. It's really not that bad. But at this point, these legs are three years old. It's 2023. Um, 
I really don't mind reuse of a mold. It really doesn't bother me, but at this point, I'm sure they could have updated this mold so that we would have the pinless joints. Let's compare her to Scarlet. I'm not sure why I have her in a T-pose. But anyway, again, we get Scarlet's legs. They are exactly the same. Right down to the boots, the seams, the butts. Everything's the same here. But the torso itself, everything from the waist up is brand new. So you get a really nice vest here in the front, some armor across her stomach. You get the double jointed elbows, pinless. I'll get a better picture of this, but here's the telemetry device on her arm. Her left arm is the same with the double jointed elbows. A little bit tight. Um, I'm not sure I'm giving it enough pressure. There we go. Now, if that irks you at all, um, that's a problem with some of these elbows. Just that different coloring there. It would have been nice if that was that canary yellow. That will show up in some action figure photography. But if you're creative, you can hide it. I do like that little detail there with the band-aid. So the band-aid, in case you're not sure, in the game, that's how Helix would mark herself on the maps. I think it's also in the comic books. There's probably more to it. I know that there's a side story where, I think it's Dr. Lewis, that's who becomes Cobra Commander. But he's injecting people or test subjects with nanotechnology. I'm not sure if that was a backstory early on for Helix. Um, I don't remember that. That is what the Band-Aid is. So what she does not carry over from Scarlet is the holsters on the side of her legs, all these uh, Batman-like pouches, and a whole new head sculpt. This is a really well-done head sculpt. Don't see any paint app issues. It is really nicely done. They did a really nice job kind of recreating her look with the different color hair that she has, the blonde and the black. Really very cool looking. And her articulation. I think I over twisted her. There you go. She's back to normal. Um, Really good articulation. Just what you kind of expect from G.I. Yeah, Joe Classified. Drop down hips action. I guess these hips don't lie. But she's definitely very cool looking. A very nice new female addition. I say new and she debuted in 2009, but I mean, that's 14 years ago. But anyway, most people probably don't know this character, but I like it. I think it's a cool addition. Let's take a look at her weapons. So I can tell you already that with her weapons, it looks like it's all new weapons. But there is some reuse. I never go over these boxes. I don't use them. Um, they're upside down. They're, these just get trashed. But if you like them, um, it's consistent. The logo, the names are upside down. I don't know why they haven't fixed that yet. But let me show you what the reuse is here. So when she was announced, um, she's got the same, this is the backpack, I had it upside down. This is the backpack that came with movie Storm Shadow, along with, it appears to be the same exact swords, just in black with the bright canary. It's like a fuzzy on here. I've never seen that before, but it's got the bright canary yellow handles. I really kind of like that deco, but we've seen it before. It's the same exact swords that come with Storm Shadow, same backpack. By the way, he was easily the best part of this movie. He was the only watchable part. And again, it was used with Kamakura. Actually, his backpack is on him, but it's the exact same, same swords. The backpack fits right in, so regardless if it was used for the male figures or now for Helix, it goes in just fine. Actually, I mean, I really do like that color. It's really sharp looking. She comes with her 10 millimeter auto pistols. Now, I think she's had this since the beginning. I'm pretty sure the figure from the Rise of Cobra line has the same weapons. And although they're oddly shaped with their long magazine, I'm, are these real guns? I mean, it's kind of cool. But they go right into the holster, no problem. A little awkward looking. I don't know if there's any real life practicality to that. Um, I can't imagine somebody would want to run around with those things. She's got a nice, huge knife. That's an assassin's knife. So there's a little loop on the back here. It'll go right into that loop. Again, actual practicality to that. I mean, I would think that thing would go right into her thigh when she's running. And then she's got these mantis 
These Mantis swords. I don't remember ever seeing these in the comic books or any promotional artwork. I don't think she used it in the video game. But these things are badass looking. They do bend and they look like the arms or the legs of a praying mantis. So I'm taking a look here. I don't see a difference between right and left. Other than other than this joint here. So ultimately, it's going to depend on how you want it to look in your display or in pictures. But it goes right on the forearms, and it sits pretty nice. Again, practicality here. I've never seen this before. Um, it is very cool looking. I definitely wouldn't mess with anybody with these things. But all done up, I didn't think I was going to like the yellow or the color schemes. But it kind of pops. It's unique. Again, I'm not a fan of this, where it's this colored at the joint but i really like the color scheme here and how she looks as a character and the swords they really pop i like that it's black with the the bright yellow so she's not she's not technically like a ninja or something so i guess the color scheme wouldn't really matter but she is supposed to be an off the grid character almost a ghost so she's one of the only gi joes that does not have a military background again she's a civilian she's on the autistic spectrum and because of her unique view of the world hawk wanted to keep her out of the hands of cobra and in turn created a weapon that would work alongside gi joe what do you guys think of agent helix how do you guys think about how she was in that packaging again there it's an easy trick for you to fix you really shouldn't have to but don't worry too much do the boiling pot method you'll be able to get her right back to where she needs to be oh you know something i wanted to check i wanted to check her neck peg i was going to compare her to the baroness so height wise pretty standard. Whenever I see reuse of something old, like the legs in this case, um, I always kind of wonder about the neck pegs, because Scarlet has the old style, that real big neck peg, and the reason I look at that is to kind of see what kind of customs we might be able to make down the road. And this is what I wanted to check out. I actually think that's kind of funny. She's got a bright yellow neck peg, very similar to the Baroness has a crimson neck peg. And they look the same size. Oh, see, that's kind of cool looking. Are we getting universal neck pegs? Hasbro, are you giving it to us finally? Probably not. Ah, but there you go. Yeah, a whole new character now. A whole new Baroness. I messed up her hair. She looks like me. Anyway, that's a nice fit. I should probably have the yellow glasses on there, but there's another look. That's actually very cool looking. So that's kind of promising. All right, so there's going to be that one person I confused, so let me just change it back. But there you have it. Helix's head, the new Baroness head. They're interchangeable on the necks. All right, so I think I asked the question already, but what do you think of the new Helix? Will you grab a new female G.I. Joe? What are your thoughts on having a character that is heavily insinuated in the stories to be on the spectrum? Again, I feel she's more like a Christian Wolf from The Accountant, the Ben Affleck movie. Ben Affleck? Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. The Dunkin' Donuts guy. Anyway, will you pick her up? What do you think? I like her. I think she's good. Let's get her in a breakdance pose and up on the lazy susan all right guys thanks for watching have a good one go hug somebody oh oh i never say this I, I or i don't say it all the time like comment share let me know in the comments what i can fix and take care thanks Whenever I see reuse of old legs or 